Praise God. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord today. Jesus is Lord. It's great to be here, and I love to see the snow that's out there. And God is still on the throne. Praise the Lord. Praise God. How about if we pray here before I preach? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you're a good God, that you're with us, and that, Lord God, you have a plan and a purpose for our lives. I ask your blessing upon this word today. Let not one word come forth, Lord, that is not meant to come forth. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> well, I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. I said Christmas. And I don't mean happy holidays either. I mean Christmas. Amen. Because Christmas is about Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, what is Christmas about anyway? We've really lost the true meaning of Christmas. The people of the world, like Ebenezer Scrooge, our society is all about the amount of product that can be sold. It's a maddening rush to get all you can as fast as you can. It starts really early. Right after Halloween, in stores, you will see Christmas decorations on display right next to the plastic pumpkins and Halloween candy that is now stale, but it's half price off, and getting staler by the day. The TV bombards our children with all the newest electronic devices. They just have to get them, cell phones, iPods, game systems, and on and on it goes. There are commercials for dads, too. Trucks that they might like with all kinds of towing packages and uh, great gas mileage. And, oh, the guys can tell you exactly what's on that truck. Leaf springs and helpers. My husband's one of the ones that will tell you exactly what he wants in a, a truck or a vehicle. And, uh, and the... The commercials will be right there geared. They'll show you that gleaming truck, and you've just got to have it. And you can put so much money down on it, and it can be yours for the holidays. And my, there's even one for your wife if she likes it. <laughs> Praise God. So we know what that's all about. And we can't leave mom out either because uh, you do know every kiss begins with K. And she might just love that chocolate diamond that bracelet there or ring. So... We do know there's a push to sell and sell big to make money. <clears throat> but we know that that's not what Christmas is really about. Right? Amen. Oh, and even it's even a little worse, too, because um, if you want to go Christmas shopping, uh, you might want to do it on Black Friday because you might want to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and hurry through the stores to grab that 55-inch TV that you might want to have and... And uh, I'm not against shopping and all of that, but what I'm saying is that society's lost a true grip of what Christmas is all about. Christmas is all about that little baby that was in a manger thousands of years ago. And I'm not saying don't go Christmas shopping because I've done my share of it this year because God was good. But praise the Lord. Let's get an idea of what the true meaning of Christmas is about. God and God's Son. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need God. We need the word of God. We need the Lord. We need God where he needs to be, which is where? Front and center. Praise God. Now, I want to talk about something here. <clears throat> Our society has gotten so far away from God that we have taken him out of our school systems. We have taken him out of our thinking processes. Now, now in society's mind and opinion, it's okay to throw away babies, to have abortions, and even long full-term abortions. And this is wrong. This is not what God wants. God loves babies. Look at what he sent to earth thousands of years ago. What was it? A baby, praise the Lord. Okay, so praise God. So we need God back in our society, back in our hearts, back in our minds. Praise God. And we need to call sin, sin, because sin is sin. And we can't candy coat it anymore. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, then you need to be acting like one. 
praise God. Call sin, sin, and stand up for what's right and what's wrong. But we need to get back to our core values. We need God in our marriages. Look at nowadays how free everything is. Years ago, it wasn't that way. When you said, I do, it was for life. Not so nowadays. But we need God in our families. Our families need God. We need to put those cell phones down and have worship again in our houses. Get your Bibles out. Do a devotion with your kids. They need to know the Word of God because they're living in this world and they're going to grow up and have this to deal with. So they better have a good foundation. We need to pray together as families. In 1962, the U.S. Supreme Court banned prayer in school systems, stating it violated the First Amendment. In 1980, the Supreme Court took the Ten Commandments out of school. Our school systems need prayer. We need to get back to the Ten Commandments. We need God back where he ought to be, which is at the head of the table. Praise God. So moral corruption runs rampant. So maybe if we kept God in the school systems where he ought to be, we might not have the mass school shootings and violence, such as Columbine. There have been 32 school shootings so far this year, 90 since 2018. November 30th, a student killed four people and injured seven at an Oxford, Michigan high school. We need Jesus. We're living in a time when God or Jesus is nothing more than a cuss word. We sneeze at sin, and we don't blink an eyelash. We've become desensitized. The word, world is getting darker by the day. We need, as Christians, to ground ourselves in this word and have the faith to stand up and say, it's wrong. It's wrong to kill babies. It's wrong to take God out of the classroom. We need to realize who our king is. Who is your king? Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the one who does not change, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is with you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now let's get into some word. We're going to go to the book of John, chapter 8. John, chapter 8, verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Praise God. So Jesus is our light. In Psalm 14, 1, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Now we're going to go to John 1, 1 through 3. John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness hath not understood it. God is the light of the world. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So in him is light and no darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 22, let's go to Revelation 22. I believe it's verse 13. Actually, actually 12. Behold, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That's what God is. That's where God needs to be in our society. The first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Praise God. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. And now we're going to look at um, 
John 1, 1 through 3. Let's go to that. And look at it again. It's the same scripture we had. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was a life, and that life was the light of men. Light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. You know, when I was in school, my teacher said to me, if I say something twice, I want you to pay attention because it's going to be on the test. <laughs> so praise God. I don't know why God wanted this twice, but we just need to know that in the beginning it was with God. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 14, I believe it is of the same chapter. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Praise God. So the word became flesh. Who's the word? Jesus is the word of God, that living word of God. So he became flesh and dwelt among us. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 2.6, let's go to that. Philippians 2, 6 says, Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. Isaiah seven fourteen says, Therefore the Lord will give you a sign, the virgin shall be with child, will give birth to a son, and will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 2. One through eighteen. Now in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. 
when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Praise God. This is the Christmas story. This is what Christmas is all about. A little baby came down from heaven, and we know that little baby was Jesus Christ. And Jesus, when he was in heaven, I imagine could wear robes of, oh my goodness, the majesty. Can you just imagine the splendor of the Son of God? I can't even fathom it in my mind. The, the majesty that he was there and that he would give all that up to come down here and be born in a stable to set people free from sin. I can't even commence to think about, imagine it. Can you imagine being with God and all that is holy and good and say, okay, I'm going to give all this up and I'm going to go be born as a child, but even greater than that, I'm going to be born in a stable with animals around me. Oh, whoa, I can't even think about that. But God loves you, and that's why he was willing to do that. <clears throat> the true meaning of Christmas is that little child that was born in that stable. He taught by example, Jesus did. He says in Matthew 18:3, Verily, or truly, I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become like little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. He is the example of love and humility. Another thing, too, he's never too far to get to where you are. Praise God. So if he was willing to leave his home in heaven to be born as a child for you, you must be worth a lot to him. Praise God. And if you follow Jesus' footprints, later he would be in Jerusalem in the temple teaching and astonishing the religious leaders of that time. And that time he was only 12 years old, and they would marvel at his amount of knowledge, follow him farther on to a garden where he would say, not my will, but thine be done where he would soon go to the cross of Calvary, just outside of Jerusalem. John 3.16, we can all quote it, says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is that true meaning of Christmas. He gave up his life and glory to come down here and be born in that manger because he saw through the thousands and thousands of years the souls that would say yes to Jesus and it was worth it to him to give up his life for you and for those millions of others who would be with him in heaven he wants you and his family he wants you to come to him he says come unto me all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. He wants you to come to that grace, that saving knowledge. Come to Jesus. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's simple. Ask him to come in. He will. Believe he will. Confess Jesus as Lord. He'll be the Lord of your life, and he'll show you how to walk like a Christian and how to be Christ-like. For him, it was worth it. Praise God. I thank God for each of you that came out today. I praise God for you because you're standing up for the Lord. And I praise God for you. Each one of you are my brothers and my sisters. And I praise God for you. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have made, Lord. We thank you so much for your sacrifice and for your birth and your life and the examples that you taught. Lord, be with us this day as we go forth to have fellowship and a meal. Let us enjoy our time together, Lord, and bless the food, the ones that prepared it, the ones that provided it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.